Hello, this is Susan Miller, and I'm the founder of astrologyzone.com. And I'm doing a special broadcast for the retreat that I'm doing with Lana Zabel of IZIM. This particular focus uh, t- today will be on Mars because Mars is doing something unusual. Uh, usually Mars spends six weeks in a sign. And I think God thought that was perfectly you know, productive to have uh, Mars six weeks in a sign. It's like drinking 20 cups of coffee in a day. He's the energy planet. He is also called by astrologers to be the timekeeper of the zodiac. That means that Mars has a special ability to focus you on one part of your life. Now in June, Mars is up to Pisces. And when you have Mars in your sign, you are the leader of the parade. (laughs) You're simple Simon. When you say do this, everybody else does exactly what you tell them to, (laughs) theoretically, (laughs) hopefully. And you have a special uh, presence. I love having Mars in my sign when he gets to my sign. So if you're a Pisces, you've got until June 27th to take full advantage of Mars' presence. Now, Mars is going into Aries on June 27th. And he's not staying six weeks. He's staying six months until June 6th, 2021. That means this year, 2020, is being cut in half like a loaf of Italian bread. (laughs) And uh, wherever you have Aries in your chart, it will light up like Times Square. Now, when I say that, and I'm going to go through all 12 signs, and I'll tell you where you're going to have a huge focus, you also will have a focus on your, uh, on where Aries is according to your custom chart. So if you have Aries rising, or in your rising chart, you have Aries, say, in the 10th house, that matters too. So just treat your ascendant or rising sign means the same thing, the same way you would treat your sun sign. In other words, what I'm about to say applies to you, whether you have a custom chart or a sun sign chart or both, which hopefully you do have both. Because if you don't know your custom chart, put together with your time of birth, your city, your state, um, day, month, and year of birth, then you'll only have half of my predictions every month on Astrology Zone or any uh, forecast that you look at on the internet, in a book, anywhere. Um, The reason Mars is spending such a long time in one sign is that he's going to go retrograde in the fall. And this is problematic because Mars is the energy planet. He will be retrograde from September 9 until November 13th. Now, that's not a good time to launch a new product or even to get married or start a new relationship on the romantic scale. Mars will sex. If you get married with Mars retrograde, the sex is never the way you want it to be because you're building it into your DNA, a weak Mars. Oh, I have a workaround for that. (laughs) Of course I do. My friends are always getting married at the wrong time. If you are getting married between September 9th and November 13th, consider getting married in August at City Hall, and you bring two witnesses, or you don't, and you ask the uh, person who's marrying you if, if there are two people waiting online that wouldn't mind signing for you. 
You must keep that date secret. Uh, you should celebrate the date that you chose forever. You don't tell your mother and father that you already got married secretly so that you'd have a good astrological date. But I strongly suggest this. I had three close friends, actually my closest friends, were all having destination weddings. One in Ireland, one in Mexico, in San Miguel, Al Gente, and one in Tuscany. And they just couldn't change the date. And they all got married ahead of time on a date I chose for them. When you go through my forecast for August, and I don't want you to do anything in July with all the eclipses, unless it's at the end of July, the second half of July, I should say. And I will mention best dates always in my forecast. Second half of July, sometime in August. If you're getting married in August, I like the second half of August from the 16th which is a new moon, onward. I love September 1st. Oh, it's a full moon made in heaven. <laughs> but a lot depends on your birthday. Did you know most brides get married within um, six weeks of their birthday? And it's lucky, too, because it's the sun conjunct the sun. So it's, it's lucky. Look at your mom. Look at your friends. They say about 65 70% of them get married near their birthday. There's another interesting statistic. Most of us marry the sign of our mother or our father. When I first heard this, my daughter had read it. I said, no, Chrissy, that's not true. She said, mommy, you married our father. He's a Scorpio. Your father, grandpa, to us, is a Scorpio. Great-grandmother... And grandma's side is a Scorpio. There's a whole line of Scorpios in your family. I'm like, oh my goodness, you're right. So take a look and see if you're drawn to the sign of your mother or your father, or if there's a strong rising sign in one of their charts and you're drawn to that. The reason you're drawn to that person is that it's familiar to you. That sign is very familiar to you. All right, let's get back to Mars. Mars retrograde is a time of a lot of backtracking and redos and uh, some frustration. Uh, I will admit that. If you're working for a company that's coming out with an important new product in anticipation of holiday shopping, this is a big problem. I would say do it in August if you can move up the production date or wait until Thanksgiving. When That, that will be a good time. Uh, there's actually an eclipse on November 30th <laughs> and December 14th, but they're mild compared to the ones we're having this summer. Um, July 5th, July 21st, and July 4th. I'm sorry, it's June 21st and July 4th. So we'll get to those on my other end of the broadcast. By the way, I'm cutting these broadcasts into half hour segments because it's easier to transfer the files. I found that out yesterday when I did a picture video <laughs> and it took four hours to figure out how to send it because it was a large file. <laughs> Oh, Mercury's retrograde right now. And we'll get into that too. But I really want you to focus on Mars. And if you know your chart, this is important. Look to the house that Mars is in. Because it will tell you where your focus is in life. If it's in the 10th house, you'll go to the mat to get a great career going. If it's in your 4th house of home, you want the most beautiful home possible and you will make it just wonderful to people who live there, <laughs> your family, or friends that come and visit you. It, it gives you a special insight, lots of energy, and we'll get into that in a second. 
But Mars retrograde, let me show you something that you'll get it after I tell you this. On a good day, Mars takes two days to go one degree. When he's healthy, when he's energetic, when he's normal and not retrograding, he takes two days to go one degree. As he gets closer to September 9th, he starts running down like a person who's overtired and sleepy. And he takes 12 days to go one degree. You see how we're going to be walking through glue. Now, in the middle of the retrograde, you know, he's retrograding most of September, all of October, and half of November. So in the middle, let's say October. He speeds up a little bit, and he takes four days to go one degree. But that's still double his usual pace of two days for one degree. So as you see... Things are going to go slowly, and there'll be lots of backtracking and rethinking and readdressing. You know, we're in a, a zone like that right now because we have Saturn retrograde, Jupiter, and Pluto retrograde. Right this minute, we have Venus retrograde until June 27th. Uh, gosh, we are going to have Mercury retrograde for quite a while from... June 17th is when it started, it was a few days ago, and it will run through July 12th. And, uh, and Jupiter's retrograde, as I said. So all the planets are weak right now. And we have six planets that are in retrograde. And pretty soon Mars will be retrograde. This is a problem. So it's very important that you launch your most important ventures in the second half of July or in August, in the second half of August. Okay, now what is going to light up for you? Well, if you're in Aries, <laughs> you're going to love this because Mars is going to give you special control. When you have Mars in your sign, finally people start agreeing with you. You know, when you have Mars opposition your sun or your rising, uh, let's say if you're a Libra, because that's what they're going to have, you have to cooperate with other people. You're not going to get things your way. You're going to have to compromise a bit and listen to what the team thinks. But actually, Libra's good with that. I don't. If you're a Libra, I don't. I don't think you're going to have a hard time with this Mars in Aries. It is true, and I should say this, that Mars in Aries in the seventh house, which rules your committed partnerships, whether that's a marriage partner, someone you've lived a long time with in an established relationship, or if it's a business partner, Mars can bring arguments. So try not to let them escalate into a meltdown. But see, you're so good at this. You're Venus's daughter. You're ruled by Venus. You, um, you know how to keep a conversation calm. So I don't think you'll have problems with this, but you will be having a lot of talks about partnerships. You may be, uh, Libra, you may be entering into a partnership. Whereas Aries is deciding everything. People are letting Aries make the decisions because they're good decisions. They agree with them. Very little uh, disagreement. So, so that's good. But although our Mars will not be in good angle to Jupiter, Pluto, and, and Saturn um, when it gets into late degrees. So there will be some conflict and some pushback. Uh, so Aries, if, if you notice that, especially on the work front from higher ups in your organization or from clients, then you'll, you'll have to learn to be more like a Libra and more diplomatic. If you're a Taurus, you're going to have a lot of interaction with people behind the scenes. I'm wondering if you had to sign confidentiality papers on some project that you're working on, something. Something is uh, up. <laughs> I don't know 
what, but uh, you seem to be working behind closed doors. You might be working on your thesis or a book. When you have Mars in the 12th house, you get a lot done. <laughs> We're all in quarantine right now, so maybe you're in quarantine <laughs> where you live, and uh, you're actually liking it because you're seeing such high productivity. Uh, there's another way this could work out. Um, Mars in the 12th house could put you in contact with medical personnel more than usual. You may be going in to have an operation, not with Mercury retrograde, we're going to wait until after July 12th, if possible. But if it's an emergency, of course you do it right away. Of course you do. Because Mercury rules going back to the past and fixing things that weren't quite right. So anyway, um, Taurus, you may be talking to doctors, nurses, on behalf of a friend or a relative. But you just seem to be working with people in the medical field. It, it could be that you're going in for physical therapy for something because your doctor feels it would strengthen you and make you feel better. Because the 12th house is the house of healing, especially on the physical plane, the physical body. Oh, it's a great time to see a therapist. Ah, could not be better. The 12th house rules psychology. So if there's been something that's been bothering you, or if your family members are saying, you know, we really think you would gain something by talking this out, you know, with a professional, we're not professionals. So if your friends or your family are urging you to go, think about it. I think you should. I think you'd gain a lot from it. Um, and going back to Aries for a second, things you start when Mars is in your sign usually work out. Not everything, but usually they do um, because you're willing to put so much energy behind it that um, it can't possibly fail. Failure is not an option. Well, it never is an option with, with your sign, Aries, but right now you're super energized to make things work. If you're a Gemini, all this activity from Mars is emanating from the house of friends and social media. This is a friendly vibration because Mars is a fire sign and you are an air sign. And air makes fire burn more brightly. It's, it's two elements that go together like cup and saucer, salt and pepper. <laughs> so you're going to have a lot to do with friends and with your community of people. Now, even though it's friendly, like I've been saying, it's possible that some of your friends may argue with you or people in your constituency may be um, more vocal than usual. Let's say you're running for office and you're getting all this mail. Did you say this? Did you mean that? <laughs> and sometimes things will be taken out of context, but... You're going to have to go with the flow. You're going to go through it. You can get some help. If, if you say something on Twitter or Instagram that causes a, a, a ruckus, <laughs> you can always reach out to professionals in the social media sphere and ask for advice. Um, social media is very active right now, and it's going to be certainly active for you in the second half of 2020 all the way to January 6th. You may increase your followers quite a bit, though. Yeah, I think that's very possible. Now, if you're a Cancer, you're going to be obsessed with your work in the best way possible. The industry is going to see you as having risen a notch up to a new level. And maybe you're starting a new job. If, if you're one of the many millions of people who are out of work, I would say look hard for a job in August. You're likely to find well-paying jobs, especially in the second half. I want you to really put the pedal to the metal because when Mars goes retrograde in September, October, November, it's going to be a lot harder to get the kind of job you want. So I want you to 
really look at your resume, show it to a few family members or friends, see if you can polish it up even more than you have. And, you know, really go out there and take what's rightfully yours. You may look back at losing that one job as a blessing in disguise because I see your status rising. I was like, like Jack and the Beanstalk up to the heavens. You know, those, those special beans he planted. <laughs> well, your beans are growing straight through the clouds to heaven. You have the best aspects for increasing your status and prestige in your industry of any sign. So that's pretty extraordinary. If you're starting a new job, you're proving yourself and you will prove yourself in spades. You will do it well. Okay, so have confidence, Cancer. If you're a Leo, something's going on in one of the four or five areas I'm going to list for you. Could be higher education. You could be thinking, okay, I'm going to go back to college, but I don't know if the lockdown will happen again and I may be doing remote learning. But you don't really have a choice because if you take what they call a gap year where you're not studying, you can't really travel like college kids have been able to do in the past because, you know, it's not quite wise to travel yet because wherever you're going, the restaurants are going to be closed. Museums will be only letting a few people in at a time. It's, it's just not the right time. So you can't travel. And are you going to get a job with 45 million people looking for a job too? I don't know. Without a college degree? Mm, that's not so good. So I think you should go back to college. Mm, take as many courses as you feel comfortable with doing. Because remote learning is an adjustment. It's hard. I understand that. But lucky for you, Aries is a fire sign. You're an air. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me say that again. Mars is a fire sign in Aries. And Leo is a fire sign. So this is supreme compatibility. So you're going to do very well. There's other areas that the ninth house rules. Uh, foreign relationships. You may be doing something, a project, with someone far away from you. Or you may be working hard on a broadcasting or publishing project. The media is showing up very, very strongly in your chart. There's another part to the ninth house that a lot of people don't know about. It's, it's the philosophical area. And you may be picking up books of famous philosophers and delving into different ways of looking at the world. I think this is very exciting. Or having deep discussions with friends who are as philosophical uh, oriented as you are. But something's going on in that ninth house. Also, that house also rules uh, immigration, green card, um, visa, and passport. So those, one of those areas seems to be picking up. And uh, But you can make progress. But during Mars retrograde, you may find it frustrating. Uh, paperwork gets lost and so forth. If you have to send anything in, I would only do it by FedEx or UPS or DHL uh, or any other carrier that requires a signature. Okay, now let's get to Virgo. Okay, Virgo, you have an outlook just like Pisces. If you're a Virgo, you are going to spend a lot of money in the next six months. You may know that already. Usually a lifestyle change requires a lot of check writing. You may be moving into a new house or just moved in and find you need lots of things <laughs> to make it comfortable and pretty and enticing for people to come over. Uh, you may be paying tuition. You may be getting special classes for your child 
or if you don't have a child, you may be having a baby. Having a baby requires some money to pay the doctor and uh, different things like that. I, I don't know why you're spending money, but it seems that you may need to borrow money, but that includes mortgages. So you may be getting a mortgage, or it could mean that uh, you're investing in yourself or your business. And that's a good thing. Virgo's careful with money, so I'm not worried about you. Now, if you're a Pisces, you are spending a lot of money or someone who owes you money is either holding it up for some reason, probably because they don't have it, I don't know, or they uh, are paying you but late. So you're going to have to have some contingency plans if a check you expect. It could even be child support. Uh, from your ex that you're expecting and suddenly he loses his job and he says, I can't pay you the child support this month. And that, you know, throws you a bit. (laughs) But Pisces is very, um, like Virgo, very good with money. People don't know that. They think of the little fish as being um, not good with money, but that's not true at all. Pisces and Virgo, actually, I read in Forbes, create more millionaires than any other sign. Billionaires, actually. So, because they focus on the product or the service, not on the profit. They focus on making the product the best it could be. That's why they do well. <laughs> That's you. So you will be spending money. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then just slow down your spending. Be careful. Try to pay off your credit cards. Just try to keep things calm and taken care of because, um, you know, something's coming. If you suspect a certain person may go bankrupt and not be able to pay you what you owe, you may need a lawyer to help you before that happens to become a creditor on the list that gets paid first. I don't even know if that's possible, but you should have a lawyer that you can call if you need him, okay? I think you're going to do all right in the end because Jupiter and Pluto and Saturn are in good places for you throughout the second half of the year until December 17th and 19th when both planets go into Aquarius. So you have help from from some of the planets. You also have help from Uranus, the planet of surprise. So I would say just nail down the hatches. (laughs) You know, just be ready for anything. And then if it doesn't happen, you're fine. We don't need to prepare for good things in life. We need to prepare for the downside. Okay, so it is going to be um, an expensive few months. But like I said, you may be starting a business or adding to it, improving it, buying equipment adding more people, something's going on. Um, Now we get to Libra. And I mentioned Libra has a lot of partnership matters going on. And they'll be working with other people. And uh, when you work with someone else, it'll be on the same level as you. So if you hire um, an agent or a headhunter or um, a tutor, wedding planner, someone who has expertise that you don't have, but that you sign a contract together and you uh, decide to work together. It's a good thing. So if you're a Libra, there's all this partnership stuff going on. But because Mars is in that house and Mars can bring inflammation, you want to be sure that uh, you keep the relationship calm. Because you know, if, if you get into a meltdown, nothing gets accomplished. I say, if someone says something to you that throws you, just say, you know, let's break the conversation now. Let me think about it. I don't agree if you want to say that. But I don't know. Let me think about what you said. And then let's regroup in a two or three days. And then take a look on, on my forecast on Astrology Zone. 
and pick a day. <laughs> See, that's why I print my calendar every year. I print it for myself. I want to know which days are the best ones of every month so I can time my most important initiations to those days. And if you have my calendar, take a look at it. If you have my app, it's under key dates on the menu, but it's only the premium version of my app. Um, Apple asked me to change the name to Daily Horoscope Astrology Zone by Susan Miller. It's so much more than a daily horoscope, and I really didn't want to give it that misnomer. Uh, Apple takes 30%, so I, I listen to them. You know, they're wise. But I may be, ch I don't know, eventually changing it again. I don't know. But uh, take a look on the menu if you pay the $4.99 a month. That's what it costs, and Apple takes 30%. So take a look for key dates, and you'll have the dates in your pocket. But sometimes when you're planning a benefit or a wedding or some special event, you need to page through many dates and it's too cumbersome on an app. So that's why I have a wall calendar too. And readers are really loving it and it's on sale right now. So yeah, 20, actually we're reducing it to 50% off because we're 50% into the year. <laughs> and I do give you January 2000. 21, so all the way through January to January 31st, because who has time to shop for a calendar in December? Nobody. So anyway, let's go back to um, our list. And Scorpio, you're going to be working very hard, but be sure you understand what is being said to you, because you could be going down the wrong road, doing the assignment incorrectly, and then have to backtrack a lot in September. I remember when we were writing code for my first app, it was being done in Austin, and I said to the guys, okay, you missed the first deadline, and I understand that in technology that happens. We missed the second deadline, that happens, but now we're getting into difficult waters because Mars is retrograde. So I want you to stop working on my app, put it on the shelf, and uh, work on somebody else's project if they don't care that Mars is retrograde. <laughs> I said you could ask them. They're looking at me as if I'm from Mars. <laughs> you know, they're looking at me like I'm crazy. And I said, no, really, you really have to stop working on it. Well, I got back on a plane and went back to New York where I live. And I know what happened. They said, well, she won't know if we're working on this or not. And the chief engineer went on vacation in the company fired him because they felt he was making too much money. They hired someone much cheaper to be chief engineer. He comes back from vacation, looks at the code and says, all this is wrong. What did you all do? This is all old software. This is terrible. No, this has to be done again. The whole team had to write it all over again. And I came back to Austin and I said, you thought I wouldn't know what you did. I know what you did. I know exactly what you did. You can't hide from me. And now the app will take longer to do. You know, you're going to have to find what you wrote and take it out and then put the, the correct code in. And they had to rehire the man they fired secretly when he was on vacation, which I think is such a cowardly thing to do. They should have never fired it. You should never fire anybody who's on vacation. Oh, gosh. If you can't look at a person and say, I need to let you go because X, Y, Z, then you shouldn't fire them. I mean, I feel you should have an honest and ethical way of dealing with people. But anyway, he was back on the roster. <laughs> I'm giving you this example so that you'll listen to me. Okay, now we get to Sagittarius. Sag, you're kind of lucking out. <laughs> Mars is going to be in your fifth house of true love. And if you're single, this is a miracle because you'll be able to meet people. But as I said, it's not great meeting someone when Mars is retrograde or getting married between September 9th and November 13th. But it is a good time in August. Fantastic time, actually. And around your birthday phenomenally good time you know in late November anytime through December because you have until January uh, 6th uh, this uh, tour of Mars will also stimulate your creativity which is delicious 
So um, we all we all want to be you. <laughs> and you know what it might do when a planet goes retrograde, you often go back to the past. So an old lover might come back, someone who got away, someone you know you should never have broken up with, or vice versa, maybe that person feels the same way about you. And you can, you know, have lunch, have dinner, see if you can make a go of it again. Do you still have those old feelings? If so, go for it. Capricorn, you have a very quiet uh, Mars. Mars will be in your 12th house. Okay, now let's go to Capricorn. Capricorn, you have a quiet forecast. It's, uh, it's because Mars will be in your 12th house. So for some reason, you're working behind closed doors very intently. You may be working on a new secret project. You may be raising uh, capital or doing something that's confidential that you really don't want other people to know about. Uh, you could be around medical personnel because the 12th house is the house of confinement. Uh, confinement is hospitals, um, nursing homes. Maybe you have a, a favorite aunt who needs to be in a nursing home temporarily, maybe. Uh, or it also rules physical therapy. It also rules jails. <laughs> I once did a forecast for a lady at a top jeweler on Fifth Avenue, and you know the name. And I said, do you have any, anybody around you in a hospital? No. Mm -mm. Going through physical therapy? How about you? No. No. And finally, in exasperation, I said, well, it also rules jails. And she said, oh, my brother's in jail. <laughs> like, my Lord, I never expected that. The senior vice president telling me this. I said, oh, well, there you go. Um, well, he might be coming out at the end of this uh, in January, you know. So uh, you, <laughs> I've learned to tell everybody everything because you never know what will spark the response. <laughs> but that's kind of unusual, I think. Anyway, uh, now let's go to Aquarius. Aquarius, you have a lot going on with friends and groups. Uh, you may be working on a humanitarian project, which would be lovely. Uh, if you're not working on that, you may take a leadership position in a club. It could be a professional club you belong to, or you may just join a club that you haven't been a member of ever and find you get a lot of benefits out of it and go to the programs that the club, um, you know, lists. Uh, a lot going on with friends. And it's good because you're an air sign. Mars is a fire sign. That's compatible. Okay. Now, Pisces. Uh, Aries, as I said. Oh, wait a minute. I was wrong, Aquarius. I'm sorry, Aquarius. Uh, wait a minute. I have to redo some of this. Alana, take out what I wrote for Capricorn and for Aquarius. Scorpio was correct. Okay, let me go now to Capricorn. Capricorn, you have Mars and Aries, and that is your house of home. You're going to be obsessed with your house. What's going on? And in New York, we call our apartments our house. So uh, you may be having a lot of noise there because Mars brings noise. You could have workmen coming in and out. You could be renovating your kitchen. Uh, you could have the painters coming and they're moving furniture around to paint your apartment. Uh, you could be doing a number of things, all of them good. <laughs> so, uh, you know, think about your home and what you'd like to do to make it better. You know, when Mars goes retrograde, you may be fixing the electrical system in the house, and they may be tearing down walls to get into the wall to fix the electricity. Um, or, you know, if you're redoing your kitchen, they're taking out the cupboards. You know, there's noise. 
Now, it is also possible that you're thinking about your parents because your parents are ruled by the fourth house as well. Your mom may be asking you to pack up boxes. They may be selling your childhood house and moving to a warm climate. That's very possible. Or uh, you may be choosing a new roommate. Make sure you get along with that person, though. Mars can bring arguments now and then. So um, you, you want to be able to keep your home environment calm and very, very soothing. Because it's, you know, this year has asked a lot from all of us. So, um, so see what, how that works for you, Capricorn. But I think you've got plans. <laughs> okay, Aquarius, you're going to be traveling, but very short distances. You know, like the distance between New York and Boston, or New York and Washington, D.C., um, or New York, Chicago. It's not that far, you know, where you will be traveling, but it's more likely to be by car than by plane, because usually plane rides take us further. Not always. You know, you can take a plane to Boston, and it's only a half an hour. But, you know, usually uh, the third house is short trips. You may be having a lot to do with your sister or brother. And uh, you may be starting a business together or buying property together. Or maybe you're just renting a house, say in August, to get a little time away in a remote location where you'll be able to do social distancing from people you don't know, you know, and maybe sit on a, a beautiful beach that's not overcrowded. As possible. Um, that would be a good time to go to in August. It would be, you know, if you're tired of sitting in your apartment or house <laughs> and you just need a change of scene. They talk about quarantine fatigue, but we really have to keep our guard up. This, this coronavirus has an intelligence to it and it's on a mission to infect people. And one doctor on TV said, until we get to 70% of people infected, it's not going to stop. And we're only at 5% right now in the United States. So, you know, we have, we have a long journey ahead, and we have to accept it. It's better to know than not know. Now, with Pisces, as I said before, you will be spending money. You just don't want to put too much on credit cards. You want to be careful because this is a long trend. It goes all the way to January. So if you need money for your business, try to get it from the Small Business Association or from your bank. Don't put it on credit cards because credit card interest rates are through the roof and they're unfair, And uh, in my opinion. <laughs> I think they're way too high. Um, so try to get a line of credit from your bank. Or find other ways to get the capital you need if you need quite a bit of money for your business. If you feel you need new clothes, then try to space out your purchases so that you can handle the monthly bill that comes in and can still keep your credit rating high. Okay, now we're at the end of my Mars talk. I'm going to start a new recording because I have learned that if I'm trying to send big files, they're difficult to do. So this one runs about 40 minutes. And so you can take a break, pour yourself some coffee, uh, answer the phone, make that phone call, <laughs> go down and get the mail, <laughs> whatever you needed to do. And then I'm going to talk about eclipses. Okay, bye-bye. Hello, this is part two <laughs> of my audio broadcast for the retreat with Alana Zabel uh, for the weekend starting today, June 19th, and going through Sunday evening. Now, I wanted to talk about several things. I want to talk about the coronavirus, 
want to talk about the eclipses and and generally what's going on oh mercury retrograde too we're going to cover a few things all right right now let's first talk about the coronavirus because people are trying to make plans for the fall the coronavirus was caused by the meeting of jupiter and pluto which is usually a good thing usually i love to see these two planets together they're two financial planets and usually they bring a big bonanza. I never knew that Pluto ruled viruses. I never looked it up. You know, we would have little viruses kind of come through every uh, once in a while, but they weren't like the pandemic we're dealing with now. But I started doing research and I looked at the Spanish virus in 1918 and Jupiter and Pluto were together at that time too. And Jupiter's the giver of gifts and luck, but it's also the planet of expansion. I had never seen a downside to Pluto or Jupiter like this, never. So I never looked for it. And Jupiter was a little drunk this year. (laughs) He was happy to see his friend Pluto. He hadn't seen him in 13 years. And they had dinner, and they were to meet three times in 2020. First time already happened, April 4th. Here in New York, that was a really tough time for us. Uh, The coronavirus was at an all-time high. And it was in California as well, and Seattle. Well, Seattle got it even earlier than us. But let's just suffice to say, March and April were not our favorite months. And uh, now they're meeting again on June 29th. But they're both retrograde. When a planet is retrograde, they're weak. They just don't have the punch that they usually have. I, you know I live in New York, and you're hearing sirens out my window. And <laughs> oh, dear. I'm going to have to turn this off. That was my fax machine. Okay, now, Jupiter is saying to Pluto, what can I do? Oh, you want me to spread the virus? Okay, you know, (laughs) Jupiter, what were you thinking? But they're they're meeting a third time, and they're meeting on November 12th, sorry, November 12th. And as they get ready to meet each other on November 12th, they will get increasingly stronger. Now, Pluto goes direct on October 4th. Jupiter goes direct on a little bit earlier, September 13th or 14th. That means we're going to have quite a bit of uh, concern about the virus in the fall. I believe it will start up around the end of September or early October and go straight through to December because after these two planets part on November 12th, they are such slow-moving planets. I need them to be 10 degrees apart, and because they're slow-moving, they're going to stay together quite a long time. I don't think we're out of the woods until January 12th, to tell you the truth. But we could be uh, feeling better by Christmas, the end of December. Now, when I look at the math, and that's where I'm getting this from, because astrology is all mathematical, nothing is predetermined in astrology. We're looking at influences. But I'm saying to myself, how could things be better at the end of December, early January, when in North America, the the weather is cold and viruses do very well in cold weather? I can only conclude that our scientists all over the world who are working frantically to find some kind of cure will come up with at least a treatment to lessen the severity of this virus. 
but it's better to always have correct expectations. In my life, I always like to think philosophically. As a matter of fact, I call myself a philosopher who uses astrology to get at life's problems. And I feel that if we have the wrong expectations, we're frustrated, disappointed, upset. But if we have the right expectations, life proceeds more comfortably. And we can plan for things. If you have the kind of job that can work at home, then definitely opt for that because I'm worried about this fall and, uh, and winter. If you don't, you have to stay strong, have to keep up your immunity, have to wear, everybody has to wear their mask and gloves. I mean, that goes without saying. Luckily, here in New York, people are really doing it. We're really following what Governor Cuomo tells us to do. And, uh, and we are getting well as a result of it. Uh, we're, we're doing the best of any city in the nation right now because people are not uh, going together in groups. Did you know that when the bubonic plague raged Europe... The British government noticed whenever people were together, they would get a a severe outbreak. They didn't know what was causing the plague in the beginning. It was fleas on the hairs of rats. We'll skip over that. (laughs) They figured it out later, but if they didn't know what was causing it, they couldn't end it. But they did see a direct relationship with gatherings of people and outbreaks. So the British government shut down all the theaters. And at the time, it was the early 1600s. And the the plague would roll through the countries every once in a while, which was nerve-wracking. We're hoping it never comes back. We don't know. (laughs) It used to come and go in England. And uh, when Shakespeare's Globe Theater was shut down, he had no choice but to go home. I don't think they called it quarantine. I just think they said, stay home. And he thought, well, I've got to make a living. Hmm. I'm going to have to stay home for a year. What am I going to do? Well, I guess I'm going to have to write plays. And actually, I, I did his chart, and he has all these planets in Gemini. So, of course, he's a brilliant writer. But anyway... He stayed home in between 1605 and 1606. He wrote Anthony and Cleopatra, King Lear, and my favorite, Macbeth, all in that year, just by being quarantined at home. So we have an exceptional opportunity to be productive while at home. And perhaps certain talents have come out in you, or maybe ones that you forgot you had. I forgot that I was a really good cook and my daughter gave me blue apron for my birth uh, for uh, Mother's Day. My daughter gave me blue apron for Mother's Day and I forgot how much I enjoyed cooking and chopping the onions and carrots and and uh, garlic and uh, just just putting together a recipe. It's just so satisfying. And um uh, I've been really having fun because this company sends you a box with all the ingredients. And there are other companies, too, that do the same thing. Although Blue Apron tends to be on a more sophisticated level, I believe. I'm not sure about Sunflower. I've not tried it. And then there's Home Chef, and there's Fresh, and there's different ones. And uh, you can have fun exploring those. (laughs) But anyway, um, I I wanted you to know about Shakespeare because it's such an inspirational story. And uh, so I just feel you should plan to be doing pretty much the same thing you've done all year. Teach your children, you know, and do home learning and plan for a better year next year. This year with Mars stuck in one sign, it's an emphasis that's very clear, and I went through it in my last broadcast with you. Uh, this is part two. Uh, so I just, I just feel you'll get more variety next year, and you'll like it. 
Now, we have eclipses this summer. Eclipses always require adjustment. They have a way of bringing you a piece of information that you didn't have before. And once you put that puzzle piece that falls out of the sky into the puzzle you're working on, it changes the whole complexion of the matter. It just changes everything. It gives you that aha moment where everything starts to make sense that had puzzled you before. Eclipses are non-negotiable. If you lose your job or you break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend or, or your landlord says you have to move, we've sold the building, don't beg to have the decision reversed. Save your dignity. With an eclipse, you can never go back to the past. I give this little illustration of walking across a very scary ravine like very deep with rushing water and rocks and, you know, and when you're walking across this rickety bridge, you're wondering if it's going to hold you. It's a, it's a walking bridge and it sways. It does have hand, handrails. I imagine it to be made out of bamboo or something like that, straw. And you're wondering, is this going to hold? Because I have to get all the way to the other side. And it, it's swaying and creaking. But you do get to the other side. You're firmly planted on the, the earth on the other side of the ravine. And you should never look down when you're walking across something like that. <laughs> it's just too scary. Just look straight ahead. Don't look down. Don't remind yourself of the fear that you have. Just keep looking ahead. And that's true of any circumstance. But once you get to the other side, you hear a little noise and you look over your shoulder and the whole bridge falls in the water. With an eclipse, there is no way back. The only way is forward. This is very useful. Once you know this secret, you'll have a better life. And eclipses, as I said, shine a bright light of truth that either previously you didn't know about or didn't imagine or never paid attention to or never knew existed. Now, we came through one eclipse June 5th, which is a very sad one, when Mr. Floyd died and all the protesters came out. They are going to create change because of the timing. They did this on an eclipse Eclipses are important. You have to pay attention to the message that they give you. Some eclipses talk to you in your private life. Some in your public life, society, things you see on the news. Sometimes both. Often things that are happening in the outside world over which you had no control or no knowledge even comes to your doorstep at the time of an eclipse. Now, we have one this weekend, <laughs> and when we set the timing of the retreat, I forgot that this was eclipse time, and I always say nothing ordinary happens during an eclipse, nothing ordinary. So this retreat that Alana Zabel has put together could be very transformational and could give you that eureka moment that you've kind of been searching for always had the faith was there, but you didn't quite know how to unlock that truth that could be so helpful to your everyday life. So this weekend could be far more important to you than you thought it could be. It's a new moon solar eclipse in Cancer, zero degrees, and it's falling right on the summer solstice. Okay, when you have a cardinal sign at zero degrees, what's a cardinal sign? Aries, Libra, Cancer, Capricorn. When you have a cardinal sign at a zero degree, it means that it is highly energetic and that big changes are coming up, but they're friendly changes because remember, this is a new moon, new opportunity, new beginnings, a chance to make a breakthrough. Okay, wherever you have Cancer in your chart, 
That's where it's going to come. And it usually comes as a surprise. For Aries, it's your home. For Taurus, it's through a contract or a negotiation. It doesn't have to happen this weekend. Eclipses have a different time zone than normal new and full moons. Uh, it could come in the weeks to come, and I would say don't sign anything with Mercury retrograde because Mercury is retrograde right now from June 17th to July 12th. But you can talk, you can negotiate, and you can sign later. Almost everybody on the planet knows about Mercury retrograde, so you can just say, I won't sign until, you know, it, uh, it, it goes direct, the, the planet Mercury, the planet of communication and agreements of all kinds. If you sign when Mercury's retrograde, you're going to have to redo it later. Nobody wants to do that. You want to move forward. You don't want to keep redoing a contract. <laughs> so, um, you know, try to do it once. <laughs> um, it, you know, in astrology, even if you give a verbal agreement, it's the same thing as writing your signature. So you have to be careful with that. I'm always surprised how many people send me proposals when Mercury's retrograde. Do they think I don't follow my own advice? And they're always flawed in some appreciable way. And I'm like, why would they contact me during this awful time? Why don't they scan their own sign on my website? They'd know. I even have a table on the front of of my homepage, right on my homepage, I have a table of Mercury retrograde dates. And I know it makes no sense. How could everybody have problems with contracts, negotiations, and with electronics, email, and all digital forms? We were up to Taurus and how Taurus would feel the eclipse. And I was saying not to sign any contracts and I got started on Mercury retrograde because we were on the topic and I figured it was a good time to at least explain Mercury retrograde. I have a full article on how to deal with Mercury retrograde on the homepage of my website, Astrology Zone. That's where a lot of my essays are located. Just look to the lower left, not all the way to the bottom, but below the fold, so to speak. Keep scrolling and you'll see how to deal with eclipses, all about Mercury retrograde, a guide to working with them. So um, readers have found it very helpful and I hope you do too. Okay, let's go back to the eclipse of June 21st. You're going to be getting <laughs> some kind of opportunity here. So let's talk about Gemini. Now, Gemini, you're going to have an opportunity to make money. This is earned income. This is not a gift. <laughs> it's earned the old-fashioned way. But it should be important because it could lead you down a new road. That's what we like about eclipses. They, they give us breakthroughs. This could have something to do with the food industry. It could have to do with cooking or baking or the utensils and pots you need. Uh, it could have to do with the linens, all the things you would need for um, entertaining, um, things involving the home. Um, something about that is where the money is coming in. It could also involve hotels, shelter, um, you know, like B&B, &B, Airbnb is a shelter. <laughs> you book it and you stay in a different city. So um, see how that works for you. But Gemini, go after money-making opportunities because they're coming right after the 21st. See, with a new moon, it opens a door for weeks to come. A new moon eclipse is very strong. A new moon is always a beginning, and a full moon is always closure, culmination, or an ending, okay? So that's good for you to know. Also, oh, if you're a Cancer, you're thinking about your relationship, either at work, 
in a one-to-one uh, relationship you have with an expert, such as an agent, manager, um, publicist, accountant, uh, bookkeeper, uh, lawyer. You may be ready to take on such an expert to help you get ahead. Or you're looking at your romantic relationship. If you're happy, this eclipse could trigger an engagement. If you're not happy, it could trigger the feelings that enough is enough and I need to leave. In your case, the eclipse is very black and white. Uh, the eclipse is in your sign, so you're learning about yourself. What would make me happy, you're saying to yourself. Make a list of five things that would make you happy if you could fix them in your life. Pretty much it's the first thing you write down. <laughs> it's probably number one, and everything else flows from there. Uh, it might be a new job or moving to another city. It, it depends. Everything depends on you. This is so personal to you. And if your birthday falls on June 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, this is an important weekend for you. It sets the tone for your entire year, and you're going to see lots of exciting changes. New people are pouring into your life. You may have a new job. You might get engaged, as I said. Something new is happening that's really important to you. It's so personal to your heart, I can't even tell you what it is. If you are a Leo, you may be having changes in your work environment. New computers may be coming in, or your company may move to new headquarters, or you may start working at home and find you really love it. Um, and maybe you go to the office once or twice a week or something like that. Um, life is changing radically because of this pandemic. And we're finding out that workers can be just as productive without being supervised <laughs> every minute. I don't know why people didn't understand that. Um, my company has always worked remotely because, you know, New York has tough weather and I didn't want people going through snow, ice, or 100 degree weather to get to me. You know, it just seemed wrong. So we've all been working remotely for years. But anyway, maybe you are. Leo, something's changing in your work environment. Or it could be regarding your health in terms that you want to get fit and healthy, you're starting off on a new, new path, and you're loving it. You might find a series of exercises on YouTube or um, some other way. Gyms are opening up. But you know, we have to see how that goes. You might want to work with a personal trainer one-on-one -on -one rather than in a group class because I don't know how they're going to do social distancing. That's going to be a little challenging. So we'll see. Uh, if you feel comfortable, then whatever you feel comfortable doing, you should do. Um, if you're a Virgo... You have an opportunity to meet someone new. It's in your house of love, new love, true love. This eclipse could bring you love. And Cupid and his little fleet of angels are hovering above and they're going to be working very hard for you in the weeks to come. Astrologers look at time differently than normal lay people. We work with bell curves. So an eclipse can affect you on the day it happens, plus or minus five days. Or it could be a month to the day early. In this case, May 21st. You may have heard something important, relevant to what I'm telling you. Or it could come one month to the day later, July 21st. I think you will feel the eclipse this month, though, because of how the other planets are positioned. So look your best, even when you're running errands to the post office, you never know who you're going to meet in a casual conversation that leads to more. If you're attached, or even if you're not, you may get pregnant, okay? It could be nice, though. It's my number one question. Most 
people want to know if they could get pregnant. You know, women have gotten educated and they were serious about their careers and then they forgot to have children. And this is the number one question. So if you're very young, don't wait too long. If you're in your late 30s, go to a fertility doctor right away because you can get help or if you're in your early 40s. Um, you have great aspects for having a baby. If you already have your children, you might find out that one of your children is making you really proud. If you're a Libra, you have great aspects for your career. Honors, awards, achievement, fame. Oh, wait a minute. Alana, just cut the one I wrote for for uh, Virgo just now. It's in their house of friendship, not their house of love. And it could lead to something more. But let me redo um, Virgo. If you're a Virgo, this eclipse is falling in your house of friendship. You may make a new friend. You may join a club or professional organization. Or you may get involved with a humanitarian activity and warm your heart and find you love it so much you'll devote more time or even change your career. This is a very special eclipse. It's a new beginning and it has to do with groups and organizations. So that's, that's interesting. And if you want to form a group to raise consciousness on a certain matter, this eclipse will help you do that. If you're a Libra, you have the best aspects for a new job, a new career, something new coming into play. <coughs> uh, the job you would take would be an elevation, something better than the one you had. And uh, again, the, the whole theme of food, things we use to cook food and prepare food or to entertain or hotels, uh, uh, gourmet food, um, food baskets. <laughs> I'm racking my brain here. Things that rule, that are involved with cancer. Uh, cancer rules food and shelter. So that would be Airbnb and hotels and things of that nature. Uh, home decorating. You know, maybe you're going to hang out a shingle and help people with their decorating needs. But... Uh, this is a nice, nice eclipse, and it could really affect your life. It's something new that you haven't done before. It, it, it does build on what you have done and what you've proven to know and do, but it brings you higher and gives you more responsibility and more power. So that's a good thing. Scorpio, foreign people, foreign places are factoring into this eclipse, or it could be the media, you may be writing a story, producing a story, or the subject of a story. <laughs> it's also the house of uh, academia. You may be getting ready to go back to college and uh, packing up and getting your books and all the things you need for the new semester. This is also the house of immigration. You may be looking into green card, visa, passport, um, getting your interview if you're going to be a citizen of an, a different country, this is it. This is the time you would finally get closure. So it's a good thing. You might travel, but you'd be one of the tiny percentages of people who do travel. They're saying to us, the experts, that you should really only travel if it's very important. But you, you might have a trip on your agenda. Uh, if you're a Sagittarian, uh, this eclipse is going to bring in money, but it's money from other people, such as an inheritance, um, a scholarship, uh, financial aid from the government, um, venture capital, uh, could be uh, a commission, royalty, licensing fee, bonus. It's not regular salary or fee. This seems to come through the back door. It also could be a mortgage or a line of credit from your bank at a, a very attractive rate. 
Okay, so you look into that too. If you're a Capricorn, well, this involves your partner. And it's really what you want in a relationship. And you're having that meditation right now. Even if it's not convenient, if you say to an eclipse, you know, really, this isn't the best time for me to stop everything I'm doing and think about these things. The universe just laughs <laughs> and says an eclipse. You can't ignore an eclipse. An eclipse becomes your main focus over the weekend. And uh, whatever it wants you to focus on, you do. That's how it works. But you've been through a very important period in your life the past few years because you've had Saturn and Jupiter and Pluto in your sign. You've had all the eclipses in your sign. And they say wherever someone has Capricorn in their chart, well, that part really lit up. And for you, that's you. <laughs> and you were going through a transformational period, learning what your talents were, even if you didn't know you had them, you saw them and what you needed to be happy. And you're having that meditation again this weekend. If you're an Aquarian, the Cancer Eclipse is actually affecting your work. Oh, wait a minute, I have to backtrack a little bit on Capricorn. Capricorn, this eclipse falls in your house of marriage so it's a new beginning in terms of a relationship. So, and it's a committed relationship, but I don't want you signing anything yet. You can make plans for after July 12th, but now's the time you start talking, okay? So you know what makes you happy, therefore you know what kind of partners and other important people you need in your life to help you um, reach goals. If you're an Aquarian, this eclipse will change your work environment. You may get uh, new headquarters, new uh, recruits to report to you. These are people either below you who report to you, or it could be new co-workers. Uh, it could be new machinery, new computers or software. It could be very new assignments, and it looks like you'll be busy in the next few months. And if you've been out of work, well, not for long. You can find work if you want it. You can even find side jobs to supplement your income if that's a goal, because it's definitely there for you. And Pisces, this eclipse should be really nice. It lights up your fifth house of true love, and you may meet someone new, or you may have a baby, <laughs> or get pregnant, <laughs> or do something special for one of your children. And your own creativity is blossoming under this eclipse. So this is a really nice time to be a Pisces. Now, the next eclipse happens on the 4th of July. The 4th of July is our nation's birthday, if you're an American. How often does that happen, that we get an eclipse on the 4th of July? Well, actually, every 19 years to the day. Yep, that's how eclipses work. Same degree, same sign. The next one's in Capricorn. And uh, this is the last one in the series of Cancer Capricorn. So Aries, this one's your career. There might be someone leaving. Sometimes when we have an eclipse of the moon, someone leaves. They get eclipsed out. They announce a resignation, a departure. Um, it could be that. Uh, it, there's a fluid atmosphere you can move up. If you're a uh, Taurus, again, contracts, agreements, writing, books, screenplays, apps, all these things that are written are important to you now and are coming to critical mass. It's a good thing because Capricorn is an earth sign. You're an earth sign. There's such compatibility there. This one should work in your favor. If you're a Gemini, you may be finally at the end of a long negotiation with somebody over money. Finally. In one way or another, this thing is coming to an end. This is the last full moon eclipse 
which means it's a lunar eclipse. This is the last one in the Cancer Capricorn series. So you won't have so many changes regarding money and income and uncertainty after this one's over. And this is the last one. So this is good. And you could get money from a client you never thought you would ever see the money from. So that is good. Keep talking, keep negotiating. And if your ex owes you money, <laughs> or if you went through a divorce and it's time for you to get your settlement, um, this is the time it would happen right now. Um, it, there's been a lot of emphasis on money for, for Gemini. It's incredibly strong for quite a while, for a couple of years. Also an emphasis on taxes, because, of course, that's money, too. We call it other people's money. <laughs> when we pay taxes, it's the government's money. It's to, you know, keep hiring people to help us <laughs> and to have a, an organized society. Uh, anyway, if you're Cancer, this full moon makes you decide one way or another if you're staying with your partner, whether you're dating or if you're married, if you're happy or if you're not. Everything becomes clear by the 4th of July, and you're able to move forward. If you felt in limbo, not for long, you won't feel that way after this eclipse. Especially if you're born uh, near um, July 4th. If you're born near the, an eclipse, your whole life changes quite appreciably in that one area. If you're a Leo, Work is finishing up finally. You're working hard. Uh, if you've gone for uh, therapy, whether to a, a therapist to talk over a problem, you may get a breakthrough now. If you've gone to therapy for physical therapy, uh, you may be coming to the end of the protocol. And maybe you feel better, which would be nice. I hope so. Oh, I would love the way that would work out. Um, a work project is definitely reaching a high point. Keep your health strong, wear your mask and your gloves because your health houses are lit up. And it's always wise anyway, you know, we all do it. <laughs> I'm sure you're doing it. I'm preaching to the choir. Um, for Virgo, this eclipse is all about baby, children, the care of children, and how you will take care of them and how you will feel better with them. That you will feel that you're doing the right thing by them. If you're in a custody battle, which is very unfortunate, well, you'd come to the end of the road on that and you would finally make an agreement. I think this eclipse, though, will benefit you because it's in Capricorn, and that's an Earth sign. And you're a Virgo, and that's an Earth sign. So I think you'll be pleased with the way it works out. If you're a Libra, you've been obsessed with your home, and I think you've been buying furniture and making it more beautiful every minute. And, uh, or maybe you're moving. <laughs> You may be moving around the 4th of July. Actually, I moved into my apartment that weekend because I remember a long time ago when I moved in here, I looked out the window and there were fireworks in the sky. And uh, it was the 4th of July weekend. And uh, I love the smell of new paint and the emptiness of an apartment that you're going to fill. And there's so many possibilities and it's just so exciting moving into a new address, isn't it? You may be doing that. And if you're not moving, you may be renovating or just buying some new furniture or tableware, or things to perk up your place. That's so nice. If you're a Scorpio, more contracts, <laughs> more emphasis on writing. <laughs> I've met several Scorpios that say they have a screenplay in them or a book that they were working very hard on. So this is great. Keep it up, because we'll be reading about you when you hit the bestseller list. And of course, Scorpio is the supreme deal maker. You may be making some important big deals. Okay, Sag, more money emphasis. 
This time the money comes in as salary and you may be discussing, you know, the, the income that you'll be getting. Uh, maybe you get a raise or if you're starting a new job, you're agreeing on the compensation. If you're a Capricorn, whoa, this is a big eclipse, especially if you're born in the first week in January, okay? So this is going to be a memorable eclipse. You really have to be born near an eclipse, and in this case, 180 degrees opposite July 4th. Or you would have to be, uh, or you would have to have a planet at 14 degrees that would be hit by the eclipse. That's how it works. Um, every eclipse has a degree, and you look in your natal chart to see if you have anything at 14 degrees of Taurus, um, Virgo, or Capricorn. Well, if you have some water sign planets, those would do well too at 14 degrees, and that would be Pisces, uh, Cancer, or Scorpio. So, but this will be a memorable time. Um, if you're an Aquarian, this is a gentle eclipse. You're not feeling it directly. It's in the house of behind the scenes activities, but you could hear of a secret that comes out and unravel a mystery that you've been puzzled about for quite a while, and now it's out in the open. And Pisces, the Capricorn eclipse lights your house of of friendship, your uh, followers on social media may expand quite a bit. Um, also, you may join a club, you might join a reading club. You know, we're all in quarantine still. Yes, the economies are opening up, but I feel we're going to have a second wave in the fall. And we're home more than usual. So you might want to join a reading club online, which would be very productive. And uh, you make a new friend. And making a new friend is such a gift. Well, we're at the end of my broadcast. This is uh, 25 minutes. But I really urge you to read my piece on eclipses. It's everything I've learned over the 25 years that I've studied astrology. And I have didn't forget anything. And I even numbered the paragraphs so that it would be easy for you to get through it and think about your own life. The thing I want to leave you with is eclipses show us that if we knock on the palace doors long enough and loud enough, some, somewhere, someone is going to open that door and let you in. So just keep working on your dreams because it does work. If you're really impassioned, being persistent always works. Okay, well, I look forward to the Q&A that we're going to have on Sunday. Okay, take care and have a good day. Bye-bye.